Hi, it's Miss Rosie with the San Diego Natural History Museum. The story I have for you today is all about a particular kind of butterfly, one that almost everyone knows exactly what the name of that butterfly is. That is Monarch Butterfly. And this book is written and illustrated by Gail Gibbons. A monarch butterfly searches for a milkweed plant. The butterfly lands on a leaf. She gently presses a tiny egg on it. The egg is the beginning of another monarch butterfly. It's summertime in North America. A breeze stirs the stem of the milkweed plant. The monarch egg is white and shiny. It is the size of a small dot and sticks to the leaf. Do you see the tiny little monarch egg on the leaf there? When the butterfly lays her egg, she makes it sticky like glue. Wind and rain cannot make the egg Come loose. In a few days, the egg hatches. Out crawls a small caterpillar, also called a larva. First, the caterpillar eats its eggshell, then it begins to eat the milkweed leaf. The egg of a monarch is almost always laid on a milkweed plant because the milkweed will be its food. So you can see there, it's starting to eat that leaf. The caterpillar eats and grows and begins to change. When the caterpillar gets too big for its old skin, it breaks out of it and shows the new skin underneath. This is called molting. Did you know that a lot of insects and arachnids molt? Arachnids are mostly spiders and crabs, things like that. They also molt, isn't that neat? For two weeks, the caterpillar eats and eats the milkweed leaves. As it grows bigger and bigger, it will molt about five times. Finally, it is a full-grown monarch caterpillar, about two inches long. So most of you have seen a monarch caterpillar. It's yellow and black striped. Usually, we see them when they're really big. When the caterpillar is full grown, it stops eating and something wonderful begins to happen. The caterpillar creeps to the stem of a leaf and drops down head first. The caterpillar's bright colors become greenish. Look at that. Next, the caterpillar's skin splits open at the back of the head. It continues splitting until it falls off. You would think that it would hurt, wouldn't you? This new form is called a chrysalis or pupa. The chrysalis is like a blanket that is wrapped around the body growing inside. So a lot of people know that as a, a cocoon, but when we're talking about butterflies, it's a pupa or a chrysalis. At first, the chrysalis is long and soft. Then it shrinks and hardens, becomes light green, decorated with gold dots. Inside, the monarch caterpillar begins to grow. Uh, about two weeks later, or just before the monarch butterfly comes out of the chrysalis, you can see, look at that, you can kind of see through the chrysalis, right? You see that monarch growing? The chrysalis wiggles, then it splits open. The butterfly begins to pull itself out. Its heads and legs appear first, and then the abdomen and wings slide out. At first, the wings are crumpled up and stuck together, and the butterfly's abdomen is big. The abdomen becomes smaller. So the abdomen is like the belly, right? 
So the abdomen's going to shrink. You can see right here how big it is. It will shrink and the leaves will get harder. The butterfly sits quietly for a few hours, waiting for its wings to dry and harden. At last, they begin to move slowly, then beat faster and faster. The butterfly flutters up to the sky. Its colors warn birds and animals that it tastes bad and can make them sick if eaten. Most monarchs are left alone. So we know that, like red and orange, that's warning. Don't come near me, right, or stop. There are so many parts to a butterfly. Take a look at that picture. So many different parts, lots of big scientific words. The monarch butterfly only flies during the day. When it rains, the butterfly stays dry, hidden under leaves. The monarch butterflies that hatch in the spring and early summer live only for a few weeks. That's most insects only live for a few weeks. The butterflies that hatch in midsummer will take a long trip to a warmer place because they need warm weather to stay alive. This trip is called migration. It's a long trip. Lots of animals migrate, birds, whales, butterflies. The monarch will fly to where its ancestors have always gone, sometimes to the very same tree. Other monarchs keep appearing, making a cloud of orange in the sky. At night, they rest in trees. Take a look, all those butterflies. Sometimes they fly up to 12 miles an hour and almost 100 miles a day. There could be over a thousand butterflies traveling together. They fly to places such as Florida, Southern California, and Mexico. Some butterflies migrate 4,000 miles. They will stay south throughout the winter. I have a hard time imagining how far 4,000 miles are, is, but look at that, they go really far. Some towns and cities are proud to have the butterflies visit them. They have festivals to celebrate their arrival. That looks like fun. Children dress up for parades and butterfly costumes. Sometimes there's a band and visitors come from all around. Monarchs can cluster together, thousands of them clinging to one tree, a butterfly tree. In the spring, these butterflies will migrate north again to the fields of milkweed plants. And then the whole cycle starts all over again, right? Then they'll lay the eggs on the milkweed plants and then we'll get more monarch butterflies. So if you want to plant a milkweed plant, it's really important to find one that's native to Southern California, not the tropical milkweed that we see a lot of that in the nurseries here in Southern California. But we wanna make sure that it's the native milkweed. The butterflies really like those the best. So the craft I have for you today is super easy. I just took black paper and some orange paper and we made a little butterfly. This is a mosaic, so it doesn't matter what the shapes are. I just glued those shapes onto my butterfly shape and there's my monarch butterfly. I hope you enjoyed the story today and I'll see you next time.